game. I'm super excited. I'm really excited as well, especially to see what these leads are going to be, since we kind of have an idea of what Adam might want to go for. But for Lou, it's going to be actually some similar leads to what we're used to seeing, but just a different form for these Pokemon. We do see a uh, Duskull and a Litten hitting the field for <laughs> Lou, and for Adam, it's going to be Riolu and that Rufflet. Yeah, so, you know, uh, in the end, the Riolu and the uh, Rufflet put on a fair amount of uh, offensive pressure here, actually. A Riolu, I, I'm really curious about its moveset because it does get access to a lot of priority. Something like Screech would be really interesting. And there is the Screech, so yeah. I Also, like, the thing about uh, this format is, is there an Eviolite? Uh, and, and what Pokemon is the Eviolite on? Uh, mm -hmm. Because if there isn't an Eviolite, yeah, I think, like, a Max Rufflet can just do so much damage, especially with... Uh, pressure from Screech and Helping Hand, so yeah, we get to see Rufflet Max, and I think it's definitely one of the strongest Pokemon in this format due to its ability. Is the new phrase, Rufflet users always lead Rufflet? I kind of wonder if that's going to be the new phrase now, seeing this Little Cup game, oh. but uh, <laughs> Lennon's going to use Fake Out. A Fake Out into the Dynamax Rufflet won't do anything. There's a Max Airstream coming out, and oh my goodness, what a turn one there for Adam. <laughs> Oh, that's going to be a very speedy start for Adam. And especially when you take a look at these Pokemon, it's going to get punished by this Trick Room coming out from the Duskull. Yeah, so the Duskull is able to survive the Helping Hand boosted attack and uh, that Intimidate really paying off huge coming from the uh, for, from the Lidden. So yeah, you know, that's one of the reasons why Fake Out isn't as good in this, uh, it just in general compared to previous years of VGC because you can just Dynamax the Pokemon. So uh, I think... You know, Rufflet's a Pokemon that wants to Dynamax the majority of the time with Adam's team, so that was a strong turn one. But I think Lou actually now in a pretty favorable position. She has a lot of speed control in her favor. Like, she has a lot of slow Pokemon, right? She's actually going to commit to Dynamax too, so it's going to be the Dynamax Litting coming out. <laughs> it's funny because even its uh, evolutions don't Dynamax. Like, Incineroar is a Pokemon that doesn't Dynamax very often, but mm -hmm. in the context of this matchup, it actually think makes a fair amount of sense. You want to put on pressure and damage right now. And there's a helping hand as well. <laughs> Wow, that Duskull is really set up to support its partner, it says Riolu gets follow me. Uh, that is going to be uh, taking away this max flare from the Rufflet, and ooh, Riolu hangs on! Yeah, with that focus oh, that's a focus dash, dash right there. Able to redirect an attack away, burn a turn of Dynamax effectively, because a normal attack would have just done a ton of damage there as well, as the Max Knuckle now comes out, so negating that Intimidate boost. Just a fair amount of damage to that Lidden as well, so, you know, Adam, this next turn, could go for something like a, another Follow Me, but Duskull might just be able to pick up a Knockout onto it with an attack it should go before the Lidden as well, so you could, you know, uh, pretty safely target the Riolu with Duskull, and then Lidden can get a big attack off against the Rough Lid, so, uh... Yeah, I think the Linen should survive another Max Knuckle. Uh, an Airstream, though, it might feign to, especially if you partner it up and, like, helping hand support. So, uh, let's see. Uh, right now, though, I think Lou definitely in a more favorable position because uh, her attacks will go first, but I'm not sure if she can actually knock out the uh, Rufflet here. <laughs> and there's this priority Ooh, Screech. Screech. Oh, that's really interesting. That is going to drop Litten's defense pretty harshly, so that might be enough to get the knockout. But uh, Nightshade from the Duskull is going to be enough to knock out Adam's Riolu. So let's see what this Litten is going to be able to accomplish in this turn. Oh! And oh, it gets the knockout! Boosted by that sun, Max Flare is able to just pick up the one-hit KO onto the Rufflet. So uh, Adam kind of just going for a... Big play there, trying to pick up the knockout onto the Lidden, maybe hoping to survive a max player, but uh, isn't able to survive. Ends up taking two knockouts, and Lou still has all four of her Pokemon right now. So, uh, yeah, the Dusko just being able to survive and get that Trick Room up is such a big deal. That's why intimidating a Pokemon that wants the Dynamax is always just so, so huge. Of course, the Onyx now is able to come out. It actually does put on a fair amount of offensive pressure. And uh, Nightshade, you know, doesn't actually do that much damage considering how, I mean, the level of these Pokemon, just how much HP they have in general. So I'm curious if Lidden decides to actually maybe consider switching out so it can switch back in for Intimidate against the Onyx. Uh, Duskull here should be able to get one last Nightshade off before fainting, but if it does have, like, Pain Split or Will-O-Wisp, which, you know, Dusclops is often carry, uh, can just be able to heal back a little bit while also distributing damage, but looks like Lou's just going to offer a Nightshade. Nightshade is going to oh. scale as the rock slide 
Litten is going to hang on. What? Yeah, and that's a huge survival though, despite the defense drops, able to hang on. But the Max Darkness actually it goes into the Onyx instead of the Ghastly, so that's actually going to be able to uh, get an attack off and pick up the knockout onto Litten. I think if uh, the Litten had targeted the Ghastly, Lou would be in a really commanding position because it would effectively be a 3v1. Uh, now, actually, Adam has both of his Pokemon and Lou uh, lost both of her Pokemon, so she's bring forced to bring into her last two. But I thought Litten would actually put in a lot more work than I expected. I wasn't sure what Pokemon on Lou's end would want to Dynamax. Ends up being that Litten. And uh, it was actually really good offensively. Like, the fact that the Max Flare was able to just pick up the Nokia onto Ruffled, I think, is really impressive. Uh, I think uh, Corfish now coming out, though, so very excited to see that Pokemon, as well as Meow. <laughs> yeah, Corfish and Meow. That's very interesting uh, to round out Lou's final four, two. And uh, I, I'm just really excited to see what that Corfish is going to do. Yeah, I'm really curious how the speeds interact here because, like, Onyx is a really slow Pokemon, right? So, like, uh, and Meowth is a really fast Pokemon, but uh, Corphish is still going to be the first Ooh. Pokemon to go. It's going to get the Crab Hammer off, it connects, and it just picks up the one hit KO. So, uh, the fact that like, Corphish is slower than the Onyx is such a big deal. Uh, or faster under Trick Room. So, Sludge Bomb's going to be able to come out, but Meowth is actually going to go down to that. Okay. Wow, that's a lot of offensive pressure from Adam is ghastly that I kind of wasn't expecting. No, not at all. And actually, now the Ghastly will go first. It's going to get the Sludge Bomb off. Can't this just pick up a one-hit KO onto the Corphish? It does! Oh, it does! Wow! Adam actually pulls it out despite being down uh, two to four. And ultimately, it was this Choice Specs Ghastly that was able to pick up three knockouts <laughs> turn after turn after turn. Yeah, that that's was crazy. really exciting. Oh yeah, my gosh. I, uh, I, I mean... Like, what, what, what just happened? <laughs> I think that's why we're both speechless right now is because there was just a lot that happened. It's kind of hard to unpack it all, right? Yeah, I think, you know, from like to analyze the game, I think uh, what Lou needed to do is actually knock out the Ghastly uh, in that end when she had the uh, Liden still out on the field because she had the Max Darkness and I think Max Darkness should just pick up the KO against a regular Ghastly there. Uh, but by not targeting it, she ended up going for a little bit of chip damage onto the uh, Onyx, which actually didn't even really ended up mattering. Uh, I think Onyx at that point does seem like the threat because Trick Room is up, but yeah, I mean, I, I think ultimately Lou had a really good strategy, right? Set up Trick Room, Lou in sweeps, and then just like close out the game. Meowth didn't do anything for her in that end game, so I'm curious if she wants to make maybe switch it up. Even just having a faster Pokemon with Protect there as you stall out the last turn of Trick Room could be really valuable, but yeah, let's get into the second game. I can't really wait. I mean, this is really crazy. Like, there were a lot of cool strategies revealed immediately from that first game, and uh, I, I think from Lou's end, sticking with the same game plan is fine. Uh, you just need to be able to knock out that Ghastly because that Choice Specs Ghastly actually does so much damage. But uh, it actually comes out as a lead here immediately and Drifloon comes out this time. Yeah, excited to see Drifloon. There's just so much offense coming out from Adam's end right now. We have the Choice Specs on the Ghastly and the Choice Band on the Meowth as well. Or sorry, not the Meowth, excuse me, uh, the Sneasel. So, you can maybe just double up into Ladusco here with like two super effective attacks and just pick up a knockout onto it, deny Lou of the Trick Room. I'm curious if like Drifloon here ups for like a Tailwind. There's two means of speed controls here. So uh, I, I like the, the lead mix up on Adams and he realizes like a Trick Room is really bad for my team to go up against. So I really just need to pick up a knockout and not let it go up. Uh, Rufflet is not the way to deny Trick Room. Instead, I'm going to offer Pokemon that have ways to hit the Duskull for super effective damage. So big question here is what is the Drifloon moveset? I, I honestly have no idea. So I'm very curious to see. And if there's something like an ally switch from Duskull come, that can come out right now, that would be interesting. Although I don't think it would do very much. And who's actually going to commit the Dynamax? So it should be Drift flu maxing, which I gotta say I wasn't expecting. Yeah, I, I mean, I feel like when you see like Drift Blim and regular VGC, you do see it Dynamax pretty frequently when it comes out onto the field early. Uh, but I, Drift Loon, th that's a is new it one. Be for Shadow me. Sneak? Gonna... Oh, it is. Oh, Shadow yeah. Sneak. <laughs> that's the one thing I was thinking. Shadow Sneak weakness policy on Bird, and now you have a boosted Drift Loon that's able to pick up a knockout on potentially either of these. Uh, you know, it's still kind of risky to go for that because I think either the Ghastly or the Sneasel can pick up the knockout onto the Drift Bloom, but I think I really like that play from Luzen saying you have to respect the Trick Room option, so uh, the Sneasel here, you know, not going to target into the Drift Bloom, allowing it to now just fully pressure with so much offense. That is such a smart play from Luzen on this first turn. <laughs> Throw Ooh, the up one hit KO. <laughs> It's a lot of offensive pressure. You did mention that coming out from the Sneasel, so that's kind of putting in its work. 
and uh, but there it still stands to reason that there is a boosted max Drifloon on the field. <laughs> Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I was thinking maybe it's self shadow seek with the weakness policy. It actually ends up being that. I think that makes a lot of sense because Drifloon's a Pokemon that wants to take advantage of Unburden. Uh, so we actually see Inner Focus coming into effect right now. But this is pretty interesting because Adam could go for a Dynamax now with the uh, Onyx. Does a lot of damage. Uh, of course, did get intimidated, so uh, won't be able to do as much as he'd probably want. And I think right now Drifloon's going to want to uh, exert pressure onto the Sneasel. So what makes this interesting is that Onyx is intimidated, but still able to do a fair amount of damage to Drifloon with super effective attacks. And it has that Assault Vest as well, so it's able to take special attacks pretty well. Uh, that was a really dynamic first turn, though. I wasn't sure if the Duskull could actually survive a Choice Bandit attack there and actually ends up going down. So, <laughs> you know, it's really interesting. In this format, we're basically seeing a lot of adaptations of strategies that are pretty common in VGC 2020, just with, mm -hmm. you know, Pokemon that are not fully evolved. But this, the classic weakness policy, uh, activating your weakness policy, uh, and just going with really hyper-offensive uh, Pokemon like the Sneasel and like the... Um, yeah, like the Rufflet, is very similar to what we actually see traditionally in VGC 2020. Well, this is not something that we see every day. It's going to be a Dynamax uh, Onyx on the field. <laughs> That's not a very common Pokemon in VGC 2020. That's for sure, but uh, the Drifloon is definitely going to be securing another knockout with that Max Airstream, and we'll have to see what this Onyx is going to do. Yeah, I'm... I think the Onyx might not have max candies because its HP stat is, I think, a little lower than what it should be if it was uh, fully Dynamax candied up. But let's see if the Max Rockfall can pick up the knockout. Oh, the Drifloon actually oh, survives. <laughs> yeah, Drifloon. Oh my goodness. Drifloon is just uh, a Pokemon that I, w I wouldn't have expected to, to do so so well, but it is. It's like it's like no. winning all these surprises on Lou's team. Yeah, definitely, and I think the weakness policy, it was just such a good adjustment because, like, Lou recognized, okay, like, Trick Room was really good as a strategy in that first game, but Adam's gonna try to counter it, and Adam led something that exactly countered the way to set up Trick Room, so instead she decides, okay, I don't think the Drift Loom is gonna really be respected this turn, I'm just gonna max and start dishing out damage, and this Drift Loom's been so good so far, so, uh, you know, if the real Lou had a priority attack like Bullet Punch here, we'd be able to pick up the knockout onto Drift Loom, but not able to really do anything right now. Uh, however, you know, uh, Adam still is has a Dynamax Pokemon out, right, in the Onyx, and I mm -hmm. uh, can get some boosts with all its attacks as well, can pick up the knockout onto Drifting here as well. Uh, I, I think, like, depending on what Lou's last Pokemon is, Onyx is just still pretty tanky, but uh, Lou's able to just keep getting uh, defense drops with these Max Phantasms, which means you'll do more with those physical type attacks like Flare Blitz from Wooden. Yeah, I, well, Focus Sash, real loop brought down to its Focus Sash, so it will be able to get at least one turn off. Um, but the Flare Blitz comes out and from Linton, and that's actually going to make it so that real loop can't move at all this turn. Yeah, I like that play from Luz and just deny uh, the Pokemon basically from being able to do anything. And now, effectively, it's a 3v1. Sure, the Onyx can pick up a knockout on one of these two Pokemon, but uh, you've gotten multiple defense drops off now. Uh, yeah, the Rockfall pretty ha much has to go into Drift Bloom because it would still hang on despite the Sandstorm. And then you're going up against the Drift Bloom with plus two special attack and attack. So uh, I think, yeah, Drift Bloom got so much value off this game, right? It was able to pick up a knockout basically every mm -hmm. turn of the Dynamax. And I think Adam probably just wasn't expecting the self shadow snake weakness policy activation. So we were both curious, you know, what in the world does this Drift Bloom do? And it turns out it is kind of a weakness policy set. So uh, now with Corefish coming out, two Pokemon exert a lot of offensive pressure. There are, you know, the bunch of defense drops here on the Onyx as well. Uh, Lydon will be able to do a fair amount. We do know that the Corefish outspeeds the Onyx, so the Onyx will be able to... Uh, under Trick Room, so the Onyx will be able to outspeed it first, but it's actually going to be an Aqua Jet coming out, and oh my goodness, wow. that just picked up the one-hit KO. <laughs> yeah, it did. Onyx is going to get knocked out here, and that's Lou taking the second game of the set. And this Little Cup game is very spicy. <laughs> It is, actually. I mean, we've seen a bunch of completely different strategies. We've seen a Rough Lit Dynamax, we've seen on Onyx Dynamax, and we've seen four different Dynamaxes in two different games, which I think actually speaks to why VGC 2020 can be really exciting, because Dynamax is such an important uh, mechanic, and who you decide to Dynamax is just super, super important. So I just love the adjustment by Lou in that game to go for Max uh, on the Drift one. She's revealed the strategy now, so from Adam's end, one really way you could adjust against that is just double target the Drift Loom on turn one with like a Choice Spec Shadow Ball and uh, just any super effective attack from that Sneasel. So I wonder if Adam decides to go with the same combination again. He has to be aware that the Drift Loom is just such a potent sweeper, so I think he has to respect it a little bit more and target it down on the first turn. 
something that I really appreciate too, that I think you already touched on a little bit, but it's just like, I feel like we're going back to basics a little bit in terms of the mechanics that VGC offers when we take mm -hmm. a look at this little cup match, like the Pokemon that you Dynamax, like using weakness policy or using those choice items or something like that. And I think that when you are taking a look at little cup, all of those little micro decisions make even more impact on your game plan just because of how little these Pokemon are. <laughs> no, absolutely. And I think at the end of the day, a lot of this resembles what we see in regular VGC 2020. Like the strategy mm -hmm. that Lou just used is classic, right? We see it with Dragapult. We see it occasionally with uh, Driftlum as well. You know, uh, one thing that was trending was like Milotic plus Driftlum activating uh, Driftlum's weakness policy and just sweeping with max Driftlum. So yeah, it's cool to see Driftlum being used in a similar role. You know, Lydon also really resembles kind of Incineroar and how it functions uh, in terms of fake out support. So I'm really curious to see how both players will go into this game three because Adam just exerts so much offensive pressure. Lou kind of needs to make sure she doesn't get KO on this first turn. She's able to do that in both of the first two games. So let's see if she's able to weather the storm in this third and final match. Let's get right into it, shall we? And see whether or not we're gonna see new Pokemon Dynamax again. Uh, but it looks like Lou is gonna be sticking to the strategy that she used in game two, uh, which is going to be that Drifloon and the Duskull. Uh, but Adam, bringing Sneasel and Riolu this time. Yeah, so the Sneasel here uh, actually is a really clever adjustment. That Follow Me allows you to redirect a uh, Shadow Sneak away. And that Throw Shop does a lot of damage, right? We saw it just be able to pick up the one-hit KO onto Duskull in that last game. So I think Adam has a bunch of options here. He's actually committing the Dynamax to Riolu. So it's going to be a third different Dynamax Pokemon in three games. But I was thinking you could just go for like a regular Follow Me and a Throw Shop as well, because that's just, he's probably able to pick up the KO on either Pokemon, especially because by maxing uh, the Riolu, you actually lose the, uh, or maxing the Sneasel, you lose the effect of that choice ban. But either way, I think the Riolu is an excellent adjustment. Uh, that really counters what Lou brought this time around. Ooh, but we are seeing an early Dynamax coming out from Adam. What is it going to be? I have a suspicion it's going to be that Sneasel, and that it is. So that's going to be a lot of offensive pressure from, from Adam's side of the field. But does Lou decide to go with the same strategy, which is going to be Dynamax and Drifloon? It's, no. She's not. Yeah, and I think that's, you know, a really good play on her end, recognizing, okay, I can't just go for the same uh, Shadow Sneak stuff anymore because of the threat of Follow Me. Ooh, but a one-hit knockout onto Duskull. That's going to be huge for Adam's game plan. It is, yeah. Denies the Trick Room from going up, and Trick Room was really problematic to go up against for Adam in that first game. So uh, it's actually, no, it goes into Drift Loom, so the Duskull is able to set up Trick Room. Drift Loom is the one fainting. Yeah, that's actually, that's still huge. I I, I mean, I, yes, Lou gets at the Trick Room, but does that mean that maybe Litten is in the back or something like that? Yeah, I think the fact actually that Adam targeted Drifloon over Duskull might have been a mistake because Trick Room was the thing that he really needed to not deny from that first game. Uh, and he wasn't able to deny it in the first game. He's not able to deny it this time around. So while Sneasel puts on a fair amount of offensive pressure, uh, we've seen that Lou has a lot of heavy offense. And especially if she has that Liden in the back this time around instead of the Meowth, which really didn't do anything. Uh, you know, Adam this time around at least uh, still has follow me pressure. He still has that focus ash, uh, on the real Lou. So you make two plays. You could go for a follow me and just target, or you could go for like a screech and a double up and maybe aggressively call out that the Sneasel is not going to get targeted this turn, expecting Lou to predict it. But yeah, I was kind of surprised to see Adam target down the Drift Loon there. I thought the Duskull target made a lot more sense. I'm actually also not sure the Dynamax was even really necessary because you're never really going to be taking damage turn one. So I actually think Adam could have conserved his Dynamax and just gone for a regular Dark type attack. Into Duskull, if he did that, I think he'd be in such an advantageous position, but uh, he's not able to deny Trick Room this time around. And still no Dynamax on Lou's end. It's just going to be a Shadow Steed coming out. Yeah, that doesn't oh, make damage. Oh, in the dodge! Corpus avoids it! Oh, and the superpower! Wow, one hit knockout onto the Sneasel. Yeah, that's a really nice play there. I think uh, Adam opting not to go for the safe follow me and gets punished really heavily for it. If you just go for follow me there, uh, sure, you lose the Riolu, but you get another big max move off. And had he just gone for like a max darkness, especially with the defense drop from the superpower, would have been able to do a lot of damage on that Corefish, but now Lou still has her Dynamax off. The Screech she even missed the Corefish. We know that this Corefish outspeeds everything on Adam's end, so you can just go for a max on the Corefish now and maybe just sweep through with it. So 
Yeah, I think Adam really getting punished now because he didn't deny the Trick Room on turn one. I'm really surprised like uh, he didn't target that Dusk Gold because the Follow Me basically makes the Drift Room pretty useless given that it won't get the weakness policy off. Huh. So Corefish might be the Pokemon that Lou is looking at Dynamaxing, but no, actually, because of those drops that we saw earlier, maybe he doesn't want to just potentially fall prey to a uh, couple of moves from Adam's side of the field. So instead, Litten comes in, gets the Intimidate drop, and Screech hits this time. Able to connect, so lowering the defense by two, which means the Onyx will be able to get a big attack off. Nightshade's going to be able to, you know, chip away a little bit at this Riolu, but uh, once again, it's just not a very effective move in the Little Cup format, it feels like, as uh, Rock Slide still does a ton of damage to Lidden. Uh, of course, Intimidate onto the Onyx, but the defense drops means that, yeah, it still takes just such a hefty amount. So I was actually kind of surprised to not see the Corefish Dynamax, but I think it makes a lot of sense. Lou probably didn't want to deal with like a, another Screech, then you'd be at minus four defense, uh, plus the superpower. So I think the switch out actually makes a lot of sense. Uh, you just have to really respect the Screech. Um, but yeah, now uh, Lou is able to pressure with Fake Out uh, or help go on offense. So she's actually just going to go straight for attack with the Helping Hand. Yeah, Helping Hand. So Riola is going to have to take this attack using the Follow Me, but... Oh, oh. Rockslide moves first! Yeah, that was kind of a big gamble there. Uh, actually ends up not getting anything off there because the Lidden is faster than the Onyx, which I don't think is really too surprising. So, uh, Lou kind of burning a turn there. What makes this tricky is now, Corfish has at least like reset its boosts or, or its uh, drops. So I think now what Corfish might want to consider is going for a max. You want to like maybe max Knuckle into the uh, Riolu, pick up a knockout, and then go for a max Geyser onto the Onyx in the subsequent turn. Um, but mm -hmm. there's only one turn of Trick Room left, which makes this kind of tricky, too, because Corefish is a Pokemon that really wants Trick Room up for multiple turns. So, yeah, I'm curious to see how this game ends up playing out. Yeah, with with two Pokemon left for Lou, you've got the Duskull and you have the Corefish. Looks like Corefish is going to be the Pokemon that you want to Dynamax in this situation, given that Lou has preserved it for as long as she has. Just maybe making sure that that's going to be an endgame win condition for her. But would you look at that? There's the Dynamax. So one thing that was really exciting about the set, I think, was like a new Pokemon Dynamaxing in every game. And I think Lou conserving yeah. her Corefish for the very oh. end, but... Oh, wait, no, it's Duskull Dynamaxing. Ooh. What? Yeah, it's Duskull. <laughs> That's actually so wait, interesting I'm because... Confused. Yeah, you can go for uh, defense drops with those Max Phantasms, which is, I gotta say, really interesting. I'm curious if that actually ends up being the right decision here. Let's see. But either way, exciting to see a Dynamax and Dusk Gold. Let's see if it can pick up the knockout onto Riolu. A knockout here would be huge, and it actually picks up the KO! Oh, <laughs> oh my that goodness. was so smart. Oh, with the critical hit. I'm really curious if uh, Riolu could have survived without that critical hit, but now you get the defense drop, Corefish outspeeds, and you just pick up the knockout onto the Onyx with the Crab Hammer, which connects. <laughs> oh my oh. gosh. Wait, no, it survived! The 30, it's right? 30. The 30. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is Earth crazy, but out. Oh, that does nothing. there's just no damage from the Onyx. Yeah, and there is, however, that Choice Specs Ghastly, which we saw was so good for Adam in that first game. So I really have to ask, can the Choice Specs Ghastly actually pick up a knockout here? I mean, there is the threat of the Aqua Jet from Corefish, right? So like Aqua Jet can just easily finish off the Onyx. But if the Shadow Ball can KO the Duskull, another Shadow Ball will just finish off the Corefish here. So uh, yeah, I mean, this is really crazy. I did not expect the Dusk to Dynamax, but it was so smart. Here's Shadow Ball coming out, but it doesn't pick up the KO. No KO here. Oh, you get the special defense drop, but I don't no, know. No, no Aqua Jet came out, when... though. Wait, Body Press? Oh, Corfish still survives that, too. So, Corfish is going to use Crab Hammer, targeting down the Ghastly. Oh, it goes down to go another crit. <laughs> <gasps> oh my goodness, what is happening? Max Phantasm comes out and thinks of the KO. Lose decision to Dynamax Duskull. I honestly did not see it coming at all. And maybe that's because I'm just used to regular VGC where like you pretty much <laughs> never Dynamax Dusklops, but it actually paid off here. 